So the PlayStation 5 jailbreak scene has been moving along quite nicely. We've covered the jailbreak scene over the last couple of years in its various forms. And the last time we talked about it, we only had what was known as a partial jailbreak. But in today's episode, I want to fill you guys in and update you guys because there's been some significant advancements in the PlayStation 5 jailbreak scene over the last couple of months. And I'm happy to report that now we have a fully working jailbreak between firmwares 3.00 and firmwares 4.51. So you ha if you have access to a PlayStation 5 that's running these firmwares, then you're in luck. You can jailbreak your PlayStation 5 with a kernel exploit. And in today's episode, I'm going to bust out my 4.03 firmware PS5 and jailbreak it and show you some of the really cool things that you can do with one. Now, I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer here. This jailbreak scene is in a rapid state of development and flux. There is a lot going on. So what you're going to see today is probably not going to be indicative of what you're going to be seeing in the next six months and in the next 12 months beyond that. So there is a lot of activity here, but I do want to update you guys and show you some of the really cool things you can do with a jailbroken PS5. Now let's assume that you do have a exploitable PlayStation 5. How do you go about the business of jailbreaking it? Well, there are a couple of things you wanna to start do, to do before you even attempt to jailbreak the system. And that is to make sure that the system is not connected to the internet and it's not accepting software updates. So to do this, you wanna go into your network settings and disable your internet connectivity. So there is no way that this system is connected to the internet. And this is only temporary because we still need to access a particular web page to get access to the jailbreak exploit itself. And the second thing that you want to do is go into your system software update and settings. And you want to disable the option that says download update files automatically and also disable the option that says install update files automatically. This will ensure that there are no system updates that get pushed when the system is in rest mode or you've, you know, you've turned the system on and it's downloading a software update in the background. It basically will stop that from happening, but it's not a complete foolproof measure. And I'll talk about that here shortly. Now, once you've disabled these two options, what you want to do is go back and re-enable your network because we want to access a web browser. Now, the way to do this is via the user guide. Now, there are a couple of different ways to get access to a Google search page. And the most common one is to scroll down until you get to the playstation.com slash system software link. Click on that and then that will pop up the system software page. From there, you can click on the YouTube icon link, which will then bring up the YouTube page. And from here, click on the sign in button on the top right hand side of the screen. And then that will bring up the sign in dialogue for YouTube. You don't want to sign into YouTube, of course. What you want to do is click on the privacy link Link, the small little privacy button at the bottom of that dialogue. And then from there, you'll be on Google's privacy page. Scroll all the way down that page until you see the little Google link at the bottom left of the page. Click on that. And then you'll finally be at a Google search page where you can enter in a new URL. Now, once you've access to the Google search box, you want to type in es7in1.site that is the URL that you want to use. Now from here, that will take you to the seven in one landing page for the PlayStation 5. And if you have a PlayStation 5, it should automatically take you to the Echo Stretch seven in one PS5 3.xx 4.xx host page. And from here, what you want to do is click on the idle source link, which is the one on the bottom right hand side. And then this will take you to the jailbreak page or the landing page itself. And as you can see here, the website is reporting on exactly what firmware we're on. You can see we're on 4.03. Now, the next step that you need to do, obviously, is to click on the jailbreak button, and this will run the kernel exploit. Now, this particular exploit is not 100% you know, uh, foolproof. There is going to be situations where you may get a dialogue message that says there is not enough free system memory. In that scenario, just click on the OK button and then re-attempt to run the jailbreak. 
in some other scenarios it may just turn off your playstation 5 so the the jailbreak itself is not foolproof i get around a 60 percent success rate now at this point once the system has been exploited you'll notice that the web page refreshes itself and you have a host of different payloads that you can select from the one that we want to run is the eta hen which is on the top left hand side this is kind of the standard one that is being used right now and this is the homebrew enabler now for those people that don't know what a homebrew enabler is it's simply a way to enable homebrew on your exploited jailbroken playstation 5. now what this means is when you power off your playstation 5 you're going to have to go through this process again you're going to have to re-enable the jailbreak or the kernel exploit and you're going to have to re-enable the homebrew enabler or run some other type of payload and i'll talk about that here shortly now in order to stop the system from trying to download system updates there's two ways you can do this the first one obviously is to turn off your network connection which is something you can do but if you do this then you lose some functionality the most kind of common method is to change your dns settings so you, what you want to do is go back into your network settings and then select your dns settings via the advanced settings menu and then change the dns settings to manual and then type in both of these ip addresses in your primary and your secondary dns settings now once you've done this and you've restarted your ps5 and then jailbroken it once again and enabled your homebrew then you should be good to go you shouldn't be getting any type of system update notification going forward in the future so this is definitely something that i recommend to anyone that has jailbroken or wants to jailbreak their playstation 5. Now the good news here is now that we have access to a jailbroken ps5 we have access to the debug menu and from here we can install packages now one of the packages that i definitely recommend that you install if you do get a hold of your jailbroken ps5 is to install an application known as idle source host this is a quick shortcut to the website that hosts the jailbreak files itself and the great part about this is because we've run it once already then there is a local copy stored on the playstation 5 cache which means that if you take your playstation 5 offline or you disconnect from the internet then you can still run the exploit offline assuming that it is in your cache and this is obviously a much more easier process than going through the user guide and settings every single time in order to get a hold of a google search box so i definitely recommend you install this application first there are some other applications that i also recommend that you install and the main one is known as items flow now if you're familiar with the ps4 scene you're probably already aware of what items flow is but effectively what you can do with items flow is that you can run all your playstation 5 games you can run playstation 5 homebrew you can run playstation 4 homebrew and you can also run playstation 4 games via fake packages and this is pretty much the swiss army knife all-in-one application that you definitely want to install when you jailbreak your ps5 this also allows you to dump your games onto your usb external flash drive or your internal hard disk and then basically allow you to play Play your backup games now playing backup games is something that is not as simple as just ripping the games from disk there are definitely some steps that you have to take which involves decrypting the executables and some specific sony libraries and this particular process can take quite a while now i do want to make you guys aware that there is a compatible game list of playstation 5 games that can be dumped and decrypted that can be run on a jailbroken ps5 via the items flow application and you can see this is the list of games that are compatible now one thing that's interesting about this list of games is you'll note that these games can actually run off a usb external device which is obviously something that you can't normally do when it comes to native ps5 games but one of the things i want to make you guys also aware of is that this is only a select list of games at the moment you can see we're up to about 58 titles i guess 57 titles and there are other games that are still yet not being able to be decrypted and still are not working correctly as you can see now if you are interested in dumping your own playstation 5 games with items flow i definitely recommend you check out modded warfare's channel because he is a fellow youtuber and does some fantastic and exceptional step-by-step -step guides on how to do all this stuff way better than myself but if you want to learn more about the steps on how to do it, then check out his channel. I will leave a link to the relevant video in the description below. 
Now, another homebrew application that has seen an update for the PS5 jailbreak is PS5 Explorer. This, of course, is a file manager for your hacked PlayStation 5, and it simply allows you to copy, paste, move files, rename them, delete them, get access to your PS5's hard drive. You can even open up some files, such as text files, and check things out. And look, at the moment, things are currently sandboxed, which means that it's technically a PlayStation 4 piece of homebrew. Now, at the moment, this is really more of a alpha or a test release, and there's really not that much you can do other than kind of snoop around and take a look at the internals of the PlayStation 5 kind of file system. But I would expect to see future iterations and future updates of this application and unlocking things and becoming more useful in the future. Now, Lib Hijacker is another thing that we've talked about previously on the channel. It's essentially a payload that unlocks and uncaps frame rates for specific games and allows you to run certain games at 60 FPS or even 120 in certain scenarios. We've talked about this before on the channel, so I don't want to get too deep into that discussion in this episode. But just know that Lib Hijacker is continuing to get development and we're starting to see more games become playable. There are some games now that perform at 120 frames per second, which was something that I wasn't able to run a couple of months ago because that functionality was not in place yet. So things are continuing to improve on that front as well. Now, to be clear, even though we have access to a jailbroken PS5, we have access to unsigned code, there is still no open source or homebrew SDK for the PS5 that allows us to build native PlayStation PlayStation 5 homebrew applications. Everything that we've seen so far is essentially PS4 apps that have been kind of retargeted to run on the PS5 and take advantage of PS5 specific features and enhancements, but they are not native PS5 apps. Now, hopefully there is a SDK that's currently being developed. I don't know if there's actually one in development right now, but it would be a real shame if that was not the case, because I think the scene could definitely use with a PS5 SDK, and then we would really start to open the floodgates of what would be possible with a homebrew enabled PlayStation 5. This would mean things like Linux would become available to us, which means that once we have access to something like Linux, then it really opens up the floodgates for basically running things like Steam and then having access to specific games running under Linux. So there is a lot more that needs to happen here for this kind of this scene to improve and get better and more mature over time. But this is a really awesome start and I'm very excited about the next 12 months and beyond of the PlayStation 5 scene now that we have access to a full jailbreak. It means that we'll start to see more advancements over time and that is something that's very exciting to me. So there you have it guys, it's a really interesting scene that I think is only going to get better over time and I'm very much excited for it. I'm going to continue to report on this as there are new advancements over the year and beyond. So check out the channel, stay tuned because I think there's a lot of exciting stuff happening in the PlayStation 5 scene right now and I definitely want to keep reporting on it as things progress. We are going to leave it here for today's episode guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. If you like this episode, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.